here are the five basic reaction types that we need to know. We need to know combustion, combination, decomposition, displacement reactions, and this one has another name. Sometimes we call it single displacement reactions. And the last one, exchange or metathesis reaction. And this one also has another name. And we can call this double displacement. So you would need to remember that this reaction has three different names, exchange, metathesis, or double displacement. OK, so let's go through these reaction types. Let's start with the first one, combustion reaction. This is what you, what do you need when you burn something? You need oxygen, right? So this is what we're going to do with this reaction. We're going to burn something, or we need oxygen. So notice that one of the elements is oxygen. There it is. Oxygen is a reactant. And the other one is a hydrocarbon. What's a hydrocarbon? It is made up of hydrogens and carbon. So here is a hydrocarbon. We've got carbons and hydrogens. Same thing, carbons and hydrogens. Different subscripts, different formulas. The thing about hydrocarbons is that they can also have other elements, but they must have mostly hydrogen and carbon. So when you combust this or burn this, you're always going to get these products, CO2 and water. Doesn't matter what the hydrocarbon is, you will have CO2 and water, always the products of CO2 and water. And then, of course, we would balance it accordingly. So this is what happens when you're burning methane in the lab, is that you are combusting it, and you're just getting CO2 and water. OK, so that's combustion. Let's go to the next one. This one's combination. So a combination reaction is made up of two single elements, not two compounds, two elements. OK, so for example, this would be potassium and chlorine. Notice that the chlorine is Cl2 because it's one of the seven, do you remember? Seven diatomics. So that's why it's Cl2 when it's by itself. Now, when you put these together, they form, look at this. This is a metal and a nonmetal. So you know what kind of compound that is. That's an ionic compound, right? It's always between a metal and a nonmetal, or we say cation and anions. Metals form cations, nonmetals form anions. So this forms an ionic compound. And whenever we write an ionic compound, you've got to remember swap and drop, right? Swap and drop. Notice that KCl has no subscript. That's because of the charges. Potassium is a plus one. Chloride's a minus one. So remember, the charges add together to be zero, so there are no subscripts. Just because it was a chlorine Cl2 over here does not mean it's going to be a 2 in the compound, because we always have to check the charges and remember, swap and drop. And then, of course, we would balance this. Let's look at the next one, MgO2, O2 oxygen. That's a diatomic. That's why it has a subscript of 2. But when you put them together, notice there is no subscript of 2. It's magnesium. Remember what the charge of magnesium is? That's 2 plus. And the oxide, you remember the charge of that, is 2 minus. So these add together to be 0, so we don't need a subscript. So whenever we're talking about combination reactions, we've got two elements adding together to form a compound. And if it's an ionic compound, you've got to remember swap and drop, swap and drop. OK, let's go to the next one, decomposition. This one, notice that we only have one reactant. OK, only one reactant. It's different from the other two that we've already talked about. This only has one reactant, and the reactant is a compound. So here we have a compound, and it breaks apart into our elements or other compounds. OK, so this one is interesting. If you've ever been in an uh, accident, this is the one that the airbag completely fills up quickly. That's from sodium azide and it decomposes rapidly, very rapidly, to produce a lot of nitrogen gas, which fills your hot air bag rather quickly. OK, so that is de This one is displacement or single displacement. So this is single. So we have an element, single displacement. You have one element 
and a compound. Okay, that was different from the other ones. This is the only one that has an element and a compound. Okay, so we've talked about combination has two elements and combustion has a hydrocarbon and oxygen and decomposition only has a single compound. This one has one element and one compound. Now this is a metal, so it's going to replace the metal. Now when you do that, you're going to get an ionic compound and then here's the copper. But again, you're going to have to check the charges. Remember the swap and drop. Now in this case, calcium is a metal, but it forms a cation, and so it replaces the cation. You wouldn't want to put two cations together, right? Just like this one. We wouldn't want to put two cations together, so the zinc is going to have to go with the sulfate. So the same thing here. Calcium is going to replace that cation and go with the hydroxide. Again, where did we get that two from? We got that from swap and drop. Calcium is a two plus. A hydroxide, got to know those polyatomic ions, is a minus one. So this would be the correct formula. And then why is H2, why is hydrogen have a subscript of two? Copper doesn't. Why does hydrogen? Because we remember this is one of the seven diatomics. Remember, when I mean, hydrogen is by itself, it acts as a diatomic, a molecule. The next one, remember, this one has three names. Exchange reaction, single displace, a double displacement, and metathesis. So in this, com in this situation, we have two compounds. In single displacement, we had an element and a compound. Do you notice the difference? This is double displacement. We have two compounds. Okay, so in this case, what happens? Well, everybody switches partners. And whenever we write these compounds, we do write the cation first, remember? So let's take a look at this one. Here's sodium, that's a cation. Sulfate, that's an anion. Silver's a cation, nitrate's the anion. So everybody switches partners. So sodium is gonna go with who? It's a cation. You think it's gonna go with another cation? Nope. Sodium is going to go with the other anion, which would be nitrate. And of course, we always write the cation first. Now look at this. This sodium nitrate does not have a sodium, has a subscript of two. Whereas this one does. Why is that? Because we have to check the charges. Don't forget swap and drop. Sulfate's a two minus, sodium's a plus. So that's why it's Na2 sulfate. But when we look at sodium and nitrate, sodium is a plus, nitrate's a minus, so these add together to be zero, so we don't put any additional subscripts down here. Okay, so same thing with silver. Silver's going to go with the sulfate. Again, check the charges. Because of sulfate's a two minus and silver's a plus, then we get Ag2SO4. Okay, so always swap and drop, swap and drop. Use the charges to check the subscripts. And then of course, notice that we are balancing it. Same thing here, same thing. Just because it was a two over here for nitrate doesn't mean we put a two over here for the, this nitrate because again, it, we have to check the charges to do so. All right, so those are our five reaction types and we're gonna use those reaction types when we're talking about writing reactions. So the first thing we have to do is know the reaction type. If you know what type of reaction it is, you will know what the products will be. And then once you write, remember to write the correct formulas, don't forget that swap and drop, we need those charges. And of course, polyatomics stay the same. Sulfate is SO4, and it's gonna be SO4. Okay, and the last thing of course is to balance, and that's how we would write our reactions. So make sure you know these reaction types. You really need to know the reaction types so you can write the balanced equations.